this video, you'll learn 10 tips to beat social isolation during a global viral pandemic. Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. Today, I would like to discuss a paradox of sorts. I'm making this video in late December 2020, during a global viral pandemic. It's really bad, and we now have vaccines that are just becoming available to frontline workers, and we're all very hopeful that maybe in the next six months, we will have uh, an opportunity to be vaccinated ourselves. In the interim, it's still really scary and people are still dying. We have been counseled to stay away, to socially isolate, to self-quarantine, to avoid even small gatherings with family, which makes social isolation imposed, which isolates us from our communities and our families and many of the tools that we've taught ourselves over the years to combat depression and anxiety, to live our best lives despite being impacted by chronic conditions have been essentially taken away from us as the gym closes and the church doesn't have opportunities to attend in person and you can't attend school and you're working from home. And pretty soon you may find yourself in a really unpleasant emotional spot. That's what I wanna talk about in this video. How do you combat social isolation during a global viral pandemic? Let's jump in. If there's one phrase to help us get through this trying time, it's paradigm shift. Paradigm shifting is something that I've discussed on this channel before. It's the idea that we identify a goal and we want to achieve that goal, but we can't do it the way that we used to because something's made it too hard. And so we have to find a different way. I'll use an example very common in the setting of multiple sclerosis. A lot of guys learn to mow their lawn when they're 11 or 12 from their dads. And they mow their lawn exactly as they were taught as a, as a preteen. They wake up Saturday, they go about their day, they wait until the sun is fully up in the middle of the day, they go out at high noon, and they mow the entire lawn. And then they come inside and take a shower. When the setting of MS, that can become near impossible because heat sensitivity and motor fatigue can make it so halfway through the lawn, you can't walk anymore. And that presents a major problem for a lot of guys that want to get their lawn mowed on the weekends. So we introduce the concept of paradigm shifting. Instead of waiting until high noon and mowing the whole lawn all at once, maybe we divide it up into front lawn on Saturday, back lawn on Sunday, and maybe we start the lawn mower as early in the morning as culturally acceptable so that we can get that front lawn mowed before the sun is fully up, avoiding the heat of the day. Here's an example of applying paradigm shifting to get your lawn mowed. But we're not talking about mowing lawns today, we're talking about social isolation and the fact that we're not around our communities and that we've been segregated from our village and we have to figure out a way to thrive and survive despite. We can apply paradigm shifting. It's interesting, several years ago, I made a video on this channel about social isolation, and I listed out, I think, 10 tips to help you with social isolation. In reviewing that old video, over half of them are not applicable because of the viral pandemic. Things like, go join a gym. Well, you can't join a gym when they're not open. So I've come up with 10 new tips that I'm going to share with you right now that are COVID pandemic friendly ways of managing social isolation. Again, as I go through them, I want you to keep in mind the concepts of paradigm shifting. The goal is clear, connect with your village. We have to be creative in the way that we do it. So let's go through my 10 tips now. Tip number one, dial down the bad news. Here we find ourselves distanced from our loved ones, our friends, our work colleagues. We, we don't come in contact with our community. And so we may turn to the television, turn on the news so that we can stay up on current events as a means of staying connected. The problem is right now there's a tremendous amount of really bad news. And day after day, being constantly barraged by more and more bad news plays a number on our psyche. As we try to combat social isolation, we're going to be successful by turning the TV off 
by removing ourselves from this constant stream of bad news. And so I'm going to challenge you. Limit your exposure to the television, specifically to the news, to maybe 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at night. Try it out for a week, and I think you'll be surprised at how much better you feel inside. Tip number two is along the same lines. It's taking a vacation from social media. Now don't turn the video off and go find a different one. Just hear me out for a second. Just like with the news, in the absence of interacting with human beings face-to-face -face live, we may turn to social media as a means to stay connected. I know that I have. And by accident, we may find ourselves spending hours upon hours staring at TikTok, staring at Twitter and Facebook, and inadvertently, we're actually abstracting ourselves from life. We're not interacting with the few people around us at our home, or we're not engaged in meaningful activities. We're sort of passively staring at the phone, kind of like a drone. I challenge you to take a week off of social media. Put down the Twitter and the Facebook and the TikTok and Instagram and give it a week's break. Sort of consider it like a brain reset. You will be surprised how much refreshed and energized you feel after that week. Try it out. At this point in the video, you're thinking, what the heck, Aaron? I'm supposed to give up TV. I'm supposed to give up social media. What am I supposed to do with myself? Well, tip number three might provide you with an option. Write a letter. And when I say write a letter, I'm talking about analog old school. Get out a piece of paper and a pen and write a letter by hand. Mail it in the U.S. mail to someone that you care about. The process of preparing and writing a letter, the anticipation of sending it off and hoping that you receive one, is something that many of us don't experience on a, on a weekly or monthly basis anymore in the modern era. And I want you to take some time to write someone a letter and then look forward to receiving one back. Number four, I'm going to call my power tip because it's super, super powerful. I want you to take a break from social media, but that doesn't mean that we can't benefit from technology. And there are a lot of really awesome communication technologies that are free to download on smartphones, on tablets, and on computers. And then you can video chat for free. I challenge you to video chat someone you loved at bare minimum once a week. And I would encourage you to set a standing scheduled visit. So Thursday nights at 8, I connect with my cousin in Texas, and then we talk for 20, 30 minutes. And I want it to be a video chat. Yes, you can use a telephone, but it's not the same thing. I want you to be able to see the human being, and I want them to be able to see you. I want the two of you to carve out time to spend together. Yes, it's virtual, but it can be very, very meaningful. Try it out if you're not already doing this, and leverage video communication technology to connect with your village, even from a distance. Tip number five is going to piggyback off tip number four. Let's again use that communication video software to do something special, to plan an event. If there's a really exciting UFC fight, get four or five of your buddies that you know are going to be watching it and all get on the same Zoom call. Have your adult beverages and your snacks ready. Everyone's watching the fight, and then you can literally talk and scream and share together. If you use that same technology, you could literally plan a dinner party. You could send out invitations. You could plan a meal that everyone makes on their own. You could all have video chat, and you could all be eating, talking, and drinking at the same time. Be creative and plan an event with people that you care about and plan it from a distance. And I would love to hear what it is. So if you take me up on the idea, leave a comment in the section below because I want to read about it. Tip number six is to get outside. Sometimes because of this global viral pandemic and the need to stay away from other people, we sort of assume that means that we need to stay indoors or psychologically we think that we have to stay indoors and we don't. You can be outside. You're just not supposed to be outside near a bunch of other people. So think about things that you can do out of doors. You could work on your garden. You could shovel your driveway here in Ohio. You can go on a walk. You could walk your pet. You could move your fitness outside and set up a yoga mat in your driveway and do it outside as opposed to in your basement. Getting outside is magical, and we don't do it enough. Breathing the fresh air, seeing the sunshine, and maybe seeing your neighbor from across the street does something special for us. And if you haven't spent enough time outside, I would encourage you to do so. You may be saying, Aaron, it's uh, December time and it's really cold outside. Okay, I get it. But I still want you to consider maybe going for a walk. 
or maybe spending just a little bit of time taking in some fresh air on your porch before going back to shelter inside again. Number seven, join and participate in an online support group. There are a tremendous amount of opportunities on the interwebs and they can help you connect with members of your community. Over the past couple months, I've done a lot of work with a group called My MS Teams. And I'm not being paid to say this, I just think they're really cool. My MS Teams is an awesome opportunity for people impacted by MS to connect with one another from around the globe. And that's an example of an online support group. And if you're not participating in one, it's an option that I'd like you to explore. Number eight is to learn something new. Many of us have a lot more free time because we're not out doing our activities after work or on the weekends. Have you wanted to learn Russian? Or have you wanted to learn how to ride dressage? Or have you wanted to take up photography or videography? If there's an activity like that that you've been thinking, man, I would really like to learn that one day, now's the day. And there's a lot of opportunities to do exactly that. Think about something that you'd like to learn. Maybe now is a good time to start that activity. Number nine is to find an activity that you enjoy online. There are a lot of really cool gaming groups and communities that you can tie into. And I want to share a personal example. My mom plays a game with her girlfriends called Mahjong. It's with a bunch of tiles and they get together at someone's house and they play. Except during a global viral pandemic, you can't. And they came up with a really cool solution. Turns out that there's an online Mahjong gaming site where people can jump on and random people can play Mahjong together. But what my mom and her friends do is they all get on at the same time and they all sit at the same virtual table. So then they play the game Mahjong together the way they have every week for the past many, many years, but they do it online. And I think that's really cool. And I recommend that you seek out something similarly. Is there a virtual game that you enjoy playing and a community out there waiting for you to join? I bet there is. Now, of course, I saved my favorite tip for last. Tip number 10 is to get a dog. That's right, get a pet. I've made a couple videos on this channel about the benefits of having a pet, and there's never been a better time to have a pet in your life than right now. Pets are amazing, and they are loyal, and they love you, and they require interaction, and they can fill a void that we all really need right now. Um, I love my dog, River, and I basically spend all day with her. She goes to work with me. Um, she sleeps upstairs in our bedroom at night. She is a constant companion. And when no one else is around, I know my dog's there. And I want you to have the same experience. So if you have been thinking about getting an iguana or a guinea pig or a cat or a dog, Now's an awesome time to do it. If you'd like to learn more tips about how to hack life despite having MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. My name's Aaron Boster, and as always, I want to thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next video or my next live stream, or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, be safe and take care.